The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 73. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women finding their inner journey to self-confidence five days a week. Visit our blog at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yap Chan. And in today's episode, I have a phenomenal woman on today. You know, she is a, a entrepreneur. I know she's a karate enthusiast because I've seen her like kick butt <laughs> on Facebook. <laughs> but, you know, she, she's here to share her story. And without further ado, I'd love to um, introduce you to Jamie Stout. Jamie, how are you doing today? And maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to the listeners. Sure. So uh, first of all, thanks for having me, Sheena. Really, you know, I, I'm an entrepreneur, as Sheena said. I uh, practice Brazilian jiu-jitsu and Muay Thai, so not karate, but close. <laughs> yeah, I'm an internet marketer. Um, I'm a mom of a little two-year-old boy, now living in Minnesota. And uh, yeah, so I run a few businesses, and, and I have my own marketing event, and um, otherwise, my little guy and uh, training pretty much keeps me busy these days, so. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that, and I'm... I'm- I'm totally, I totally apologize. I knew it was some, <laughs> some form of um, fighting. <laughs> so. No, it's over. It, it, you know, people that aren't uh, in, into martial arts pretty much generalize everything. So, you know, I've noticed I've had people like, oh, you're into Taekwondo. I'm like, not exactly, but, you know, it'll work. <laughs> okay. Sure. Cool. Thanks. And Jamie, what's your cultural background? You know, I... And I think my mother is like American Indian and my dad's like Irish and he's German and, you know, so I'm basically just everything, just anything under the sun, (laughs) you know, really I was, I grew up in, you know, West Virginia, Virginia, super Southern, um, very like country. So just pretty much all American. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And, you know, what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? I actually have two, I think. So my first one, it's, I would say, it's kind of funny because people, you hear people say this all the time, but it actually is true. People say, you know, fake it till you make it, right? But if you think about it, if you're faking it, then that means you're, you are actually acting out. You're, you're acting the way that, that you have confidence in whatever you're doing, right? And I kind of believe that that's one step towards actually believing that you can do it. So, and, and, and later on, like, in my story, I will give clear examples of how I actually had no idea what I was doing. On the inside, I was cringing, you know, but then on the outside, I looked like, you know, completely composed, like I knew what I was doing, super confident, you know, uh, in myself. So that's definitely one of them. And the other is actually from Henley, William Henley. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. So to me, that says, you know, I decide my future. I decide what I can and cannot do. You know, nobody else put a ceiling on me or a cage around me. Only my doubts and my insecurities do that. So, you know, it's you go as far as you're willing to let yourself go and push yourself. Thanks. And I like that um, explanation you did on fake it till you'll make it because, you know, we are supposed to, you know, kind of like act as if we're already there, kind of believe it before we see it. Mm -hmm. So, So I like how you put that into a positive note. So thanks for sharing that. And in your own words, how would you define self-confidence? That's hard, actually. I was thinking about this earlier. And really, to me, it's believing and trusting in your own will and in your heart to make whatever it is come to fruition. Like, like just believing that you will find a way. And if you believe that you can find a way to do whatever it is that you need to do, that you're setting out to reach whatever goal it is, then, then you can, you know? So, so you're super confident in the fact that even if you don't know what you're doing, you have no idea what the hell you're doing, you will find a way to figure it out, you know? So, so to me, that's really self-confidence is knowing whatever situation you're put into, you can adapt and conquer. I love that. It's so true. Sometimes we never know how we're, we end up at the places or the goals we get. We just know that if we set it and just do whatever it takes to do it, we get to that exactly. end result. We get to that yep. end result. And, you know, when you look back, you're like, wow, I didn't even realize that happened. Right, <laughs> exactly. Like, like half the time I'm like, I... I know I don't know how to do whatever it is that I need to do. I know that. But I believe in myself enough to know that I will find a way to figure it out. 
And really, I think that's that's the key. It's like, well, you know, again, back to fake it till you make it. You just figure it out. You find a way. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. So, Jamie, you know, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? So really, I, you know, like, like as I said, I grew up like super all-American, Southern. You know, you were kind of, ex- I don't want to say expected to just sort of go through high school, go to college, get married and, you know, have babies, be a stay-at-home mom, that kind of thing. And I always knew that that wasn't for me, but I sort of just followed the plan anyway for a really long time. Like, like I did everything I was supposed to do, played the sports, blah, 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 was in all the clubs that I was supposed to do because, you know, that's just sort of what was expected. And then when I went to college, I went to Pace University uh, up in New York City. Actually, I went to the Westchester campus upstate. But anyway, so, you know, I was really struggling. Like I, I knew that I, deep down, that I wasn't going to, you know, be like one of my peers that I was surrounded by. And, and I didn't want to be like an accountant. And I didn't want to be a teacher. I didn't want to be like, you know, a scientist or anything. I knew that I wanted to create and I want, wanted to like innovate and inspire, but I was stuck in the classroom because that's what, you know, I was told to do. So I really didn't have the confidence like that I would be able to do what everybody else was doing because I knew it just wasn't for me. So anyway, I was into, in the entrepreneur club and they actually sent, uh, you know, a group of us down to meet with a bunch of super successful entrepreneurs uh, in Orlando, actually. And so... So I went down, flew down, and, and I was, you know, what, like 19 at this time, 20 maybe. And I met these guys and, and uh, talked with them. And, and a lot, I mean, they were super successful. Well, one thing I realized by talking to them is none of them had actually went through college. Not one of them had graduated with a degree. And so I was like, oh, finally, you know, people that, that I actually feel like, you know, I, I, I can look up to and I can say, oh, that's something I can do, like, like hey, I wish I would have thought of that. And and I can innovate like that. And I can, you know, think of that kind of of business or or do this. So I went back and I dropped out of college. (laughs) And I was like, I'm going to take my money and I'm going to start a business. And that's the first time that I was actually, you know, I made a confident decision. Because before that, I kind of knew that, you know, I wasn't confident in myself that I was going to do anything that I was going to school for because I knew better. I knew that that's not what I really wanted to do. So I think the key there was also finding what I actually wanted versus what, you know, society was telling me and in the little sheep mindset that I had was to do what everybody else was doing. You know, so I sort of found my own way and then I became confident that that's what I really wanted so I could make that happen. So anyway, dropped out, started working online. I started with affiliate marketing and just sort of grew from there. And I really think, let's see. I know you were going to ask me because you mentioned before that I need to think of what my aha moment is. So since the story actually already goes into that. So I started actually doing affiliate marketing, like I said, and I started uh, being contracted by online companies, right? And they would bring me in and I would do like product launches for them. But again, even at this time, like I still wasn't super confident in my abilities to do these things. I just sort of hoped and, and like prayed and, and did as much preparation as I could. But, but I didn't really know exactly what I was doing because they don't teach that stuff in college, right? Like you're, you're an online entrepreneur, Sheena. Did they teach any of this in, in school? No, I mean, <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. they, they teach like English and like reading books. Exactly, and stuff. <laughs> exactly. So I had no idea. Like I really, you know, when you're fresh online and you're, and you're a new, you know, new entrepreneur, you really don't know what you're doing, but you're just sort of trying to figure it out. So you just sort of try to do everything, right? So anyway, so I was working with this um, copywriter on a project for a big client of ours. And he was like, oh, you know, we should put together this big marketing event because, you know, we, at this point, we had both worked in the, in the field a lot. So we knew a lot of the big companies, we, we'd been contracted by a lot of the big companies to do, you know, affiliate marketing, and, and he would write their copy. And we did a lot of product launches together, just, you know, by part that I happened to be really good at what I was doing. He happened to be really good at what he did. So people would hire us together. So we're like, well, we should just have an event and teach people how to do what we do, right? But I don't think either of us really believe that we could do it. So, you know, because it takes a lot, you know, you have to, you have to get 
a, a hotel and you have to like actually have people buy tickets right you gotta actually plan it out you have to feed them like you, you have to have speakers they have to leave not wanting to refund right you have to actually teach them something so there's a lot that went into it and none of us had done that he and i were talking and you know we talked about it for like a month and finally he said well you know what screw it let's just send out an email with a link to a paypal thing and it was like this you know Super short email, like, hey, we're having this summit, which, by the way, we hadn't planned yet, but we didn't say that, right? And it was like, we have a bunch of awesome speakers, which, by the way, we didn't, because, we again, we hadn't planned it. And here's PayPal link, and blah, 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 and it's like a thousand bucks to go, right? Just completely made this out of thin air. So, of course, again, no confidence, didn't think anybody would buy it, send it out, and we had, like, 20 people buy, right? So here we have, like, 20 grand of people's money. And we were like, well... I guess now we have to have an event, right? Super long story, a little bit shorter. We had, you know, ended up with like 120, 130 people go. And it was amazing. It it was our first one. It was amazing. Everybody walked away. We had massive testimonials. And I think at that point was my aha moment. Like, I I set out to do something. I didn't know how to do it, right? I didn't know how to, to throw an event. I didn't know, you know, how to get all the speakers together. I didn't know how to get 120 people to buy uh, these event tickets and get everybody down to Orlando and get everybody in the same. Like, I didn't know how to do that. But I then realized, like, I had believed in my heart enough to know that I would figure it out. And, and my business partner did as well. And so that was like sort of our, you know, we walked in the room the night before the event and we looked at all these empty chairs and we we're like, wow, we did it. You know, like, like we were just these little marketers that you know, hadn't done any of this. And we put all this together and it was successful. So that was really my, okay, I set out to do something and I did it. And only because I believed in myself, like it worked. And we, we were successful in that. So. That's an amazing story. You know, I just love how you just said, you know, we're just going to do this. I'm not sure how it's going to happen, but it'll happen. (laughs) It was so funny. Like I tell this story every time, like we go up and again, we have this, this event every year. And it's so funny because like, he and I, neither of us are event people. You know, we don't put on events. So it it's just amuses people that, like, somehow we end up getting, you know, I think now we're up to, like, almost 200 people, and it's, like, the third one in these rooms. <laughs> and we're not, you know, it's just not what we do, but we, again, we collected money for something before we had built it. It was really funny. It was, it was just an amusing thing. So we're like, screw it. We'll just sell tickets, and we'll send out an email and see if anybody buys. We had all these people buy, and we we're like, oh, well, I guess now we're doing it. So kind of just, you know, putting yourself out there. It's so true. Um, Like, I remember when I first started doing this podcast, right, I was doing an interview for someone before this even launched, right? And, you know, I was just talking about how successful it was, kind of like speaking life into existence. And it's just amazing when it actually came out, like the podcast was already doing well. I had no clue how it was going to happen. I had no clue if people were going to even listen, yep. right? But I was just like, you know, I'm just going to put it out there, right? <laughs> just so, do it. Just do it and yeah, see what and, happens. And then like you, right? Screw it. I'm just going to do it because, yep. you know, nothing will ever be perfect, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's that's so true. That's so true. And and especially with you, like, I had no idea that you did all this. I started researching you. You've accomplished quite a bit. Oh, well, thank you. I, I feel like I feel honored. <laughs> You search for me. (laughs) Of course. Yeah, I mean, it's been amazing, like the results, right? But I just go back to that interview. I'm like, man, I can't believe, you know, that happened even before it launched, right? Mm -hmm. So because I was asking the person who interviewed me, I'm like, can you can you release it after I I launch my podcast? It's going to launch in like three, four weeks. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So he was he was cool about that. And then when that happened and then I saw the results and all the feedback is like, wow, you know, you can truly speak life into existence and not have to worry how it's going to happen because it will happen you know, God or the universe or whoever you believe in is going to show you that way, right? It's right. All, it's all about asking the right questions. So, yeah. And I actually read something earlier today. It was like, you can't steal second base with your foot still on first, right? So you have to be courageous enough to take the step and run or else you're never going to go in the direction you want to go to. That's so true, right? It's all about just being bold and taking the action and not caring what other people think. So, Yep. Totally. So, so, Jamie, what's your life been now after that, that first event? I mean, obviously, you um, had more events <laughs> planned. And- yeah, yeah. So, we had more events, and I actually um, got smart and hired someone to help me. 
put the roof on. Uh, the first one, we had obviously no budget, you know, so so we did it all ourselves. But now I actually have someone that helps me a little bit. And what else do I do? So, you know, we have that. And it's funny because before the event, like I said, I was a private contractor and I still am. However, before I would have to sort of, you know, I'm, I'm building a business. So I'm, I'm looking for all these clients. Like I'd have to actually go out and, and I call it hunting online, right? You hunt for clients and, and you try to find these people that these business owners that would need your services and, or, you know, need your expertise and you have to reach out to them and get them to like offer you X, Y, Z to do work for them. Right. But now it's so funny, but now that you mentioned that, I just did a huge product launch for James Altucher, and he's actually really, really well known. If you don't know him, Google him. He's amazing. He has some best-selling books, uh, Choose Yourself, and he's one of my mentors. But anyway, I just did this huge launch for him, and he was email. And, and by the way, he's on like CNBC, like the news every other day or something, you know, so he's like very, very popular. He actually emailed me and he was like, oh, I have people reaching out to me. He's saying this. He says, James is like, yeah, I have people reaching out to me asking how to get in touch with you, Jamie, because you're the person everybody wants because they want to be able, you know, they want someone to do all these product launches for them because we put through like, you know, almost 10 million in sales within a month. So it's funny is when you when you get confidence and when you when you realize what you're capable of, then you're actually capable of even more. Right. And then you have people, you know, before I have to go and search for you know, clients and whatnot. And now kind of have the pick, luckily, thankfully, very thankful for that uh, with as much as I want. So that's great. And then, of course, we have the event, um, which is doing phenomenal. And now because of that, I, I have the luxury of, you know, starting other little businesses and just working on things and innovating and finding out what else I like to do. And, you know, I've been playing with like direct mail, for example, <laughs> like selling stuff. A lot of people think that's old school, but, you know, it just gives you freedom to make choices when you trust yourself, you're successful, and then you're able to take that step and just say, okay, well, now what can I do? Like, I trusted myself and I was successful in that. Now, what do I want to try to do? And, you know, you just take the step and do it. So that's what I've been doing lately. And I also compete a lot, too, like you said, in Jiu Jitsu and. And whatnot, and I think I'm going to actually have a kickboxing match maybe in March, but I'm not going to tell anyone beforehand. I'll just tell everybody after, only if I win, of course, and then only then will I send anybody videos. But <laughs> yeah, so you know, just building and being life, a family mom, life training, is great. <laughs> life is good, life is good, yes. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And um, Jamie, you know, to the woman who's listening to your episode, you know, she's also inspired with your story and wants to maybe start something in her own life to be able to have the freedom that she wants. But she's still, you know, struggling with some self-confidence issues. What would be that one tip you would give to her? Well, I mean, you know, I really don't think confidence is something you can just all of a sudden have, right? You have to build it. So I would say for someone that has no self-confidence or very little or they're trying to get more, Number one, know that you're always going to have to work on that. Like, even now, I, I find my, like, I think I'm pretty confident, right? But when I met with a new challenge, I'm not always confident that I can do it. I just have to build myself back up and say, okay, you know, I trust in my ability. But, you know, one thing that I do a lot, and you'll probably see on Facebook all the time, is I, I'll enter these, like, random things, or I'll enter, like, a marathon, right? And, the only purpose of that is to prove to myself that I set a goal, I did the work, I prepared, and I completed the goal, and I was successful. That's it. That's the only purpose of me, like, running marathons or doing a fitness competition or, like, you know, any, any of these things that I do. It's, they're only little goals that I set because when you reach a goal, it gives you confidence, right? Like, when you set out to do something... You set a date, you set a time, you say, I'm going to do this. If it's a marathon, fine. So you're running 26.2 on March 12th. So then you figure out a way to do it and you do it and you set your heart to it. And after you complete that, it's like, you know, you have the most confidence you've ever had. Yeah, I would just say, just set small goals. Like, again, just sticking to running, just, just to make it, you know, super simple. If your goal is to eventually get to 26.2 like say today i'm gonna do three and after you do three you're confident that you can do four 
after you do four, you're confident you can do five. But you actually af- actually have to put the effort in and reach that goal, no matter how small it is, because it'll give you the self confidence to then take another step forward and and continue down that line. So that's what I would do. That's I, I practice that all the time, and I'll preach it forever. It's just to set small goals, complete them, and it'll give you the confidence to then you know keep moving up. Thank you. And I, I love that advice. And it's so true, right? Because when you can just go a little bit more than the last time, it makes a huge difference, especially if you're doing something like 21 days in a row, right? Mm-hmm. Just, just doing a mile more each day, like it makes a huge difference. And people don't realize that these small steps is what makes people become, you know, they say the overnight success, which mm-hmm. obviously isn't right, because they've been just going at it for the longest time. So, you know, thanks for sharing that. And yep. Jamie, if um, our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit about you know, what you do, you know, about your events or just, you know, a little bit more about what you do or who you are. Are there any like social media profiles or websites that we can link with? Social media. So, you know, you can find me on Facebook. I'll give Sheena the link, but it's, I think Jamie.stout1 is, or just search J-A-M-I is how you spell my first name, Stout. And because I'm involved in so many businesses and so many opportunities, that's pretty much the best thing. Even if you went to my event site, it has nothing to do with, you know, a lot of the things you guys are probably into. So really, if you just want to reach me, uh, Facebook's fine. So yeah, and thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. And I know, you know, you're a well known, very well known, you have a lot of listeners, a lot of uh, people downloading your podcast. So thanks again for having me on. No problem. It was a pleasure to have you on, you know, so I knew you had to come here and share your story, because I know there's someone out there who can just be inspired and say, yep, today's the day I'm going to take on the world or, you know, it's just, it's just helping women out there realize what's possible. So thank you so much, Jamie. And to the listeners out there, make sure you head on to the tab selfconfidence.com. If you want to search for Jamie's name, her show notes will pop up along with everything else we talked about. And like I said, thank you again, Jamie. And to the listeners out there, be on the lookout for another new episode of another amazing woman's journey to self-confidence. And we will talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for joining us on the Tao of Self-Confidence. Visit the Tao of Self-Confidence.com for links to everything we chatted about today, as well as killer resources, gifts, and so much more. Start your inner journey to self-confidence today.